So the first trade I put, and again, these are not signings. These are trades because PG would have to be signed. LeBron would have to be signed. But a realistic trade is Jimmy Butler, if the Heat decide to move on and they decide to say, well, you know, we don't want to deal with Butler anymore and Pat Riley's fed up and Miami says we're going to go in a different direction and we feel like Butler is peaked. This is how I could see a trade playing out. Now, I've all, all indications have said the Sixers would have to give up multiple first round picks. And I agree with that. You know, even though you're getting a 34 year old Jimmy Butler, he wants a max extension. He wants to pretty much be with a team for the rest of his career. So you're going to have to give up assets. And again, this is not what I would prefer to do. I would rather find the best role players out there, the best gems and try to make magic, right? Try to strike lightning with some of these guys, but it's hard to do that. And if you don't want to waste another season of Embiid's prime, if you mess that up, the more sure route is probably to get a guy who you know, you know, can already give you, you know, 20 to 25 points per game and can show up in the playoffs, et cetera, if healthy. So in this first mock trade scenario, it is a two team trade with the Sixers and the Miami Heat. The Sixers give up exactly what has been rumored three first round picks. They give up their first this year, 2024, number 16 overall. They give up the first round pick in 2026 via OKC, Houston, or the Clippers. And then they give up their first round pick in 2028, a top five protected. What do we think about this? Now, I want to throw in a little bit of a wrinkle. All right, stay with me, ladies and gentlemen. Because I think if a Jimmy Butler trade happens, let me know if you agree or disagree. I think that it's actually going to be a three-team. So in this trade, it is now a three-team deal with the Sixers, the Miami Heat, and the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Miami Heat now get Donovan Mitchell because I, I think Pat Riley's mindset is if we move off Jimmy, we don't want to just take a complete step back. We still want to contend. We want to get younger. Donovan Mitchell, a superstar in his prime, had a great playoffs until he got injured. And all indications are that you know he hasn't been happy in Cleveland. Now, on the flip side, they're going to do whatever it takes to keep him. So maybe they convince Donovan Mitchell that Cleveland is his home and they keep him around. But there's a lot going on with him and Darius Garland. So maybe the Cavaliers decide to trade Mitchell. And in return, they get Tyler Hero. They get three first round picks. Well, actually, four first round picks, two from Philly and two from Miami. And they get a second round pick. The Heat get a first rounder in 2028 from Philadelphia. So basically, in this trade, the Sixers get Jimmy Butler and they trade the three first round picks that we have heard about for weeks now. And the Miami Heat end up giving up Tyler Hero, two first round picks and a second, but they get one back from Philly. So the Heat end up giving up Tyler Hero, a first round pick, if you, you know, cancel them out, and a second round pick. The Sixers give up the three first. The Heat get Donovan Mitchell, superstar in his prime, a guard who could run a really nasty pick and roll with Bam Adebayo. Sixers get Jimmy Butler to be that third star, that wing who can hopefully show up with Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid. And then the Cavaliers get a haul of assets that they can use to build in the next couple years and continue to grow with, say, Evan Mobley, maybe Jared Allen if he's still there, whoever their new coach is, Darius Garland if he's still there. Do we think that this could happen? Now, I will add in one thing here, as you can see at the bottom, the stipend rule would kick in. So this trade couldn't be completed until after the draft. Maybe, you know, the Cavaliers would have the Sixers and the Miami Heat draft for them because the Cavs would be getting number 15 and 16 in this draft. In this mock trade, they would get both first round picks, 15 and 16 from Miami and Philly. So I think that, you know, obviously the Cavs are going to want to upgrade immediately. They would have the Sixers and Heat draft, but this trade could be completed after the NBA draft. This one is more so. So we'll take a little step back. Uh, the Sixers need high level role players if they decide to go out and go the third star route, if they decide to go the role player route, whichever route they go. This deal makes way too much sense. Alex Caruso should have been traded at the last deadline. DeMar DeRozan should have been traded. 
Drummond should have been traded. I don't know why the Chicago Bulls ever in their right mind thought that they could contend, but as it showed, they could not. And the Bulls are in purgatory. Like they need to just hit the reset button and get rid of these guys. Alex Caruso is on one of the best contracts in the NBA right now. Obviously, you would hope to extend him. Still pretty young, six foot five guard, great on ball defender, knocked down 40% of his threes last year. Average 10 points per game, two almost two steals per game. Just an excellent role player. And I just really like his game. I think he could fit very well next to Tyrese Maxey, bring more of that backcourt defense that you need. And in this deal, the Sixers would give up their second round pick this year, number 41, which is actually from Chicago originally. And they would also give up their first round pick in 26 via OKC, Houston, or LA Clippers. So this is um probably going to be a little less favorable than their own. It all depends on how the Sixers play out these next couple years, but still should be a decent first round pick. So the Sixers are essentially giving up a later first round pick and a second round pick to the Chicago Bulls. I'm not going to sit here and say that another team wouldn't trump this offer and maybe go above, but this is the base of where I would start it at. And I would try to get Alex Caruso. I'm not worried about a second round pick. I'd much rather get Alex Caruso, a solidified role player who can come in and immediately impact winning is not going to cost you a lot this season. All of the objectives in mind, this type of player makes too much sense for Philadelphia. Now, before we go back to our last star trade, I want to go to another role player because I've been saying for about two and a half years now that Jordan Clarkson is a perfect fit on the Philadelphia 76ers. He's a microwave scorer off the bench. He's a bucket getter. Yes, he is making $14 million per year, which is a little bit steep for a type of guy like that. But as the cap continues to increase, as the limits continue to increase, $14 million really isn't that much. Now, Jordan Clarkson is an adequate defender at best, but he's a sniper, man. He can knock down shots from long range. He can knock down from the midi. He can create off the dribble. And he can just heat up. There's going to be stretches just like any role player where he's inconsistent and he's shot chucking and he's inefficient. But overall, you look at this guy's numbers, man. He can give you 15 to 20 a game. He can be that pure six man scorer. And I really like Jordan Clarkson. I think he'd be a great fit when it comes to Utah. I think they're going to try to shed some salary. They, they're saying that they want to build around Larry Markkinen. I don't know how effective that will be. So they would give up their own first round pick and they would get back a first via Minnesota or Cleveland. And then they would also give up a second round pick in 2027. I definitely wouldn't overpay for Jordan Clarkson because again, he's only got two years left on the deal. So I wouldn't go over the top and, you know, try to give up multiple first or a really good uh, placed first round pick. But I would swap first round picks and I would give up a second. Brandon Ingram on the Philadelphia 76ers, yes or no? Because it seems like if Jimmy Butler stays put and Paul George stays put and LeBron stays put, it feels like Brandon Ingram is the most sure guy to get moved this offseason. Now, personally, I do not want Brandon Ingram, but I think he could be a backup plan for the 76ers. But I saw the way that he played down the stretch of the season. The Pelicans needed him to emerge and step up. And then especially when Zion went down, they needed Brandon Ingram to be that guy. And he just wasn't. I feel like some team is going to pay him, though. I feel like some team will give up assets and pay him. He wants a max contract. I don't know if he'll get that. But I think somebody will give him good money on three, four, or five years. And I don't know. I feel like it could be the Sixers. Matter of fact, it's funny how everything plays out. You know, people wanted the Sixers to draft him and they ended up drafting Ben Simmons and just to see how their careers have shaped out. The Pelicans need to retool. I don't think they need to rebuild, but I think they need to retool around Zion. They might move McCollum. They might move Ingram. Ingram did not look happy in New Orleans. So anyway, in this mock trade, this is how I think one would play out. I think the Sixers would get Brandon Ingram. And again, keep in mind that the Sixers have a lot of cap space, so they would not have to give up salaries in, in these types of deals, right? They'd be able to take it on just like in the in the uh, Jimmy Butler trade. 
But they would take on the 36 mil for Brandon Ingram. They'd probably end up extending him, right? And they'd bring him into a system with Maxi and Bede. Could Nick Nurse unlock Brandon Ingram, get more out of him? Maybe. But outside of Ingram, the Sixers would swap first round picks in 24. They would move from 16 back to 21. The Sixers would also give up a first round pick in 2026, the one that's via OKC, Houston, or LA. They would give up a second in 27. They would give up a first in 29 and then swap second rounds in 2030. So overall, two first rounders and a second round pick and pick swaps. And I know some people in the chat are probably going to look at this and say, wow, that's way too much. I agree. However, I would like you to go back and look at the James Harden trade. Go back and look at the Kevin Durant trade. Look at the Rudy Gobert trade. Ever since that Gobert trade, the whole market has been screwed up, flipped on its head. And these guys are just getting traded for way too much now, in my opinion. But um, yeah, there, there's a lot of hole in these trades. I personally would not like it. But if it comes down to this and you have no other option, okay, I guess we can make it work.